السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد brothers sisters حياكم الله وبياكم yes sir yes ma'am it is definitely the time for العقيدة الوسيطية لشيخ السبب التيمي رحمه الله تعالى and um, we are going to go straight into the subject ma'a because it is that important. Let me make sure that I got the right Arabic, as they say, <laughs> in the Philippines. And uh, now, so here, uh, because this is, of course, ma'atuf ala ma qablihi, hello. ويدعون إلى مكارم الأخلاق ومحاسن الأعمال ويدعون إلى مكارم الأخلاق ومحاسن أعمال they meaning أهل السنة والجماعة they invite to noble character and good deeds مكارم الأخلاق أي أطايبها مكارم الأخلاق meaning the noble character meaning the طيب طيب is that which is pure that which is good and in, I think this is one of the most uh, robust and dynamic words in the Arabic language. Um, it's a very diverse word because depending on the culture, depending on the people and on the context, all of these will uh, play a role in... Uh, they will play a role in how you understand this word. For instance, just so you could be familiar with the uh, funny aspects of the Arabic language. So if, if you want to say that something is delicious, for example, in the Levant dialect, tayyib means something tastes good. Ktir tayyib al-akil, for example, they say meaning the, the food is very, very good in terms of taste, very good tasting. Uh, tayyib could also mean, uh, you know, like it's a threat. It's a major uh, <laughs> direct threat. For instance, if, if a father is displeased with his children, all he has to do is look at them and say, tayyib. And they understand from that that what's going to happen next is not necessarily tayyib at all. But, you know, you could... <laughs> <laughs> for a moment <laughs> the word might throw them off and think there's going to be something good when there's nothing good to begin with tamam uh tayyib could mean again in uh, pure so tayyibat min tayyibati ma razaqnakum for example allah told us to spend from the good of we, what he had uh, bestowed upon us um and then uh, tayyib could also mean like to to uh, comply to affirm to acknowledge uh, like, uh, you know, will you come if I will? Tayyib, khalas, tayyib, meaning, okay, understood. So, ag again, this word could mean so many different things depending on the context. So, whatever you hear it, you really have to work hard on uh, investigating the context in which it was used so that you don't wind up arriving at the wrong meaning and assume bad about people when they mean nothing but good. Tamam? طيب والكريم من كل شيء هو الطيب منه بحسب ذلك شيء منه قول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم معاذ إياك وكرائم أموالهم. Uh, so the kareem, the noble from anything is the, the, the good part of it, the pure part of it. And this is similar to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying to Mu'adh and, and, and avoid the most noble of their wealth when he sent him to Yemen. حين أمره بأخذ الزكاة من أهل اليمن. When the Prophet ﷺ commanded him to collect zakah from the people of Yemen. After he told them that the first thing you invite them to is أن يوحدوا الله أو لا إله إلا الله. Invite them to لا إله إلا الله. Telling you and teaching you that the Prophet ﷺ's message to mankind and the first thing that you're expected to do when you invite people to Islam is call them to توحيد. Not something else. والأخلاق جمع خلق وهو الصورة الباطنة في الإنسان. And أخلاق character um, is the plural of خلق which is uh, in the singular. And it is the internal image of a person, of a human. يعني السجايا والطباع. Meaning those innate uh, aspects of your soul, of yourself. You know, that which is built in. 
predisposed. Yeah. Uh, نعم. فهم يدعون إلى أن يكون الإنسان سريرته كريمة. So they invite that the human should have a noble inner predisposition. فيحب الكرم والشجاعة والتحمل من الناس والصبر. So then the person loves nobility, bravery, and uh, perseverance from people and having patience. وأن يلاقي الناس بوجه طلق and that he should meet the people with a with a smiling, a happy, uh, uh, bright face. منشر... وصدر منشرح ونفس مطمئنة and with, a, with an expanded chest and, uh, and, a, and a tranquil soul. Of course, expanded chest that he walks around like this means he's open to other people's uh, uh, things, and, you know, ideas, and, and he's, he's receptive. He's, يعني he's tolerant, of course, within certain limits. كل هذه من مكارم الأخلاقي. All of these are considered from the noble traits and the noble character. All of those. وأما محاسن الأعمال as for the good deeds فهي مما يتعلق بالجوارح. It, is, it has to do with the limbs. ويشمل الأعمال التعبدية ويشمل الأعمال التعبدية والأعمال غير التعبدية. And that will include um, uh, actions that involve acts of worship and actions that do not involve acts of worship. مثل البيع والشراء والإجارة such as buying and purchasing, selling and buying and uh, uh, renting or yeah, renting. حيث يدعو الناس إلى الصدق والنصح في العمال كلها wherein he invites the people to truthfulness and sincerity in all of these actions وإلى تجنب الكذب والخيانة and he invites people to avoid and abstain from lying and from treachery. وإذا كانوا يدعون الناس إلى ذلك فهم بفعله أولى. If they invite the people to do so, then they are more worthy of doing that themselves. Again, this is what Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a are all about, brothers and sisters. They're about them being honest and sincere and not being deceptful and not being uh, treacherous. Uh, deceitful and being treacherous and not being uh, uh, wicked. So when a person wants to observe his behavior uh, online specifically, then they need to see whether they are in line with those particular fundamental principles. قوله ويعتقدون ويعتقدون معنى قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا. And they believe that the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا. The the best of the believers in faith is the best in character. The best of the believers in faith is the best in character. هذا الحديث ينبغي أن يكون دائما نصب عيني المؤمن. This hadith should always be between the eyes, between the eyes of the believers, meaning in front of him. فأكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا مع الله ومع عباد الله. So the most perfect of believers, the most complete of believers in faith is the one with the best uh, character with Allah and with the slaves of Allah. أما حسن الخلق مع الله as for the good character with Allah فأنت تلقى أوامره بالقبول والإذعان والإنشراح وعدم الملل والضجر is that you how do you have good character with Allah how do you have a good behavior with Allah is that you receive his commands with acceptance and compliance and inshirah you're like looking forward to it you don't have any any issues with it whatsoever you're not annoyed by it وعدم الملل والضجر and you're not annoyed or bored by the commandments وأن تتلقى أحكامه الكونية بالصبر والرضا وما أشبه ذلك and that you receive and you accept Allah's universal judgments with uh, patience and, uh, and pleasure and acceptance and the likes أما حسن الخلق مع الخلق as for the good character with the creation فقيل هو بذل الندى وكف الأذى وطلاقة الوجه it was said that it, will, it is Bathlun Nada, it is basically to uh, to exert yourself in being generous. 
Kaful Adha is holding back on harming people, avoiding harming people. Talaqatul Wajhi is having a, a cheerful face. Badlun Nada Yani Al Karam Walaisa Khasam al Mal. So to exert to, to, to be generous, uh, meaning it does is not restricted to wealth. بل بالمال والجاه والنفس رادي you're generous with your money with your uh, position and with yourself you 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 basically are willing to sacrifice uh, your you use your position to help people you use your money to help people you use yourself to help people وكل هذا من بذلنا that all of these are considered a type of showing generosity وطلاقة الوجه ضده ضده العبوس and a cheerful face is the opposite of a frowning face وكذلك كف الأذى بأن لا يذي أحدا لا بالقول ولا بالفعل and also under the concept of avoiding or, or uh, uh, refraining from harming from harm is to actually avoid harming anyone with a statement or with an action mm, no coffee قوله ويندبون إلى أن تصل من قطعك وتعطي من حرمك وتعفو عمن ظلمك ويندبون إلى أن تصل من قطعك وتعطي من حرمك وتعفو عن من ظلمك. All right, let me ask you all a question. Do you know why all of these verbs, all of these أفعال, are ending with the فتحة as opposed to ضمة? Why are you saying تصل أن تصل and تعطي أن تعطي أن تعفو وأن تعفو. Does anybody know, my brothers and sisters who are grammarians and experts in the اللغة العربية, because they have meaning. What do you mean they have meaning? Why do you say تصل وتعطي وتعفو? And you don't say tasilu because the asl, the asl is that a verb mudari' fi'l mudari' ends with a dhamma. Mansub bi anna wahsh ya Muhammad. Sayyidati wa sadati innahu al wahsh al bashari al ladhi yamshi bayna al bashar al ustaz Muhammad. Lianna mansubatun bi anna. La 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 la. Guys. Listen, listen carefully. Here, ya akhwan, an ila an. This an is adatu nasb. Its its role in the language is that it comes before the verb, and then it 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 changes it from marfu' to mansub. It changes it from marfu' to mansub. So because of an. It is tasila wa tu'tiya wa ta'fuwa. Hello? Shukran jazilan ayatuhal. Bismillah. Oh, yeah. Ha, <laughs> Now we're talking. Tayyib, akhwan. Ayna kunna. Tayyib, idhan, let's, let's translate. So they encourage Ahl uh, sunnah wal jama'ah that you connect with the one who severs the relations with you. And you give to the one who deprives you. And you pardon the one who wrongs you. Ouch, ouch, ouch. May Allah guide me and guide you and guide us to comply and submit and surrender to those absolutely lovely traits of the true Salafi the true Salafi, the Salafi in the ultimate sense, the one who is adhering to the aqidah and manhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that you connect those who sever you, you give those who deprive you, and you pardon those who wrong you. Of course, not always. Sometimes if you do so, you will create a bigger harm and it becomes impermissible. But generally speaking, General rule, rule of thumb. That's how you're supposed to conduct yourself. Yandibuna ayyaduna. Afwan yandubuna ayyaduna. They invite, they encourage. 
أن تصل من قطعك من الأقارب ممن تجب صلتهم عليك. So you should, for example, uh, uh, connecting ties with your relatives whom you're obliged to keep kinship ties with. إذا قطعوك فصلهم. If they sever you, sever these ties, connect with them. لا تقل من وصلني وصلته. Don't say whoever connects with me, I will therefore connect with them. فإن هذا ليس بصلة. This is not a type of connection. And this is why <laughs> this is why I urge all of you to learn the Arabic language. Why do I encourage you all to, Arab, uh, to learn the Arabic language? Because if you didn't know Arabic, you could easily read this right now as basla. And basla as an onion. And I can imagine our brother Hajj, may Allah Azza wa Jal guide us and guide him. I can imagine with his level of Arabic that he will read it if he doesn't know any better. فَأَنَّ هَذَا لَيْسَ بَصْلَ This is not an onion. هَذَا بَطَاتِس This is potato. <laughs> but anyways, so uh, here there's no, there's no diacritical signs on the word. So you need to know Arabic to know in this context, this is بِصِلَةٍ This is بَا حَرْفْ جَرْ أَمْ صِلَةٍ أَسِمْ مَجْرُور بِالْكَسْرَ and sila means connection, and ba is is uh, with the connection. It is not a type of connection. So the word now, as it appears by itself, could easily be a basla, which is basal. Uh, it's a it's a the the feminine uh, the, fe the the feminine version of of uh, an onion. على كل حال كما قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام like the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said ليس الواصل بالمكافئ the one who the one the one who truly can keeps the kinship ties is not the one who rewards. إنما الواصل من إذا قطعت رحمه وصلها. The true person who connects ties is the one when they sever these ties, he connects them. فالواصل هو الذي إذا قطعت رحمه وصلها. قطعت رحمه وصلها. So the true connector, the true keeper of kinship ties is the one who when they sever those ties, he insists on keeping them connected. Bismillah. Mm. Gabriel. وسأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رجل فقال يا رسول الله. Pay attention to this hadith. A man asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, إن لي أقارب. I have relatives. أصلهم ويقطعونني. I I keep the kinship ties with them, but they sever me. They cut me off. And I am good with them. I treat them kindly, but they treat me badly. They treat me harshly. And I am forbearing with them, but they treat me with ignorance. They act ignorantly with me. Huh. So I am easy with them and they are harsh with me. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِن كُنْتَ كَمَا قُلْتَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, If it is indeed as you have described, فَكَأَنَّمَا تَسُفُّهُمُ الْمَلْ It is as though you are stuffing hot ashes in their mouths. وَلَا يَزَالُ مَعَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ ظَهِيرٌ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا دُمْتَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ And you will continue to receive uh, uh, support. And Allah will make you ظَهِيرٌ uh, عَلَيْهِمْ uh, Meaning you will be victorious over them. As long as you remain upon that. As long as you maintain that. تَسُفُّهُمُ الْمَلْ أَيْ كَأَنَّمَا تَضَعَ التُرَابِ so that expression is as though you're putting dirt or, or hot ashes in their mouths. They invite you that you connect those who sever you. And of course, if you and you connecting with the one who connects with you from the in the first place is more deserving. Because the one who connects with you while he's a relative. صار له حقان. He will have two rights. حق القرابة, the right of uh, relationship or kin, وحق المكافأة and the and the right of being reciprocated reciprocated that connection. He connects. You have to connect back with them. 
لقول النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام من صنع اليكم معروفا فكافئوه because the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever does any good for you then reciprocate that for him وتعطي من حرمك اي من منعك ولا تقل منعني فلا اعطيه and you give those who deprive you and you meaning you don't say oh he he deprived me so i'm going to i'm not going to give him anything no وتعفو عمن ظلمك and then you pardon whoever wrongs you اي من انتقصك حقك whoever then whoever has taken away from your right اما ان يتعدى عليك بالضرب واخذ المال وهتك العرض وهتك العرض either that the person transgresses against you by beating you or by taking your wealth or by uh, 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 you know by by basically uh, insulting you your honor basically uh, tarnishing your honor واما ان يجحدك فيمنعك حقك or he might just uh, wrong you so he does not fulfill any right that you have over him وكمال الانسان ان يعفو عمن ظلمه بسم الله and a person truly reaches uh, a person truly reaches perfection when he is able to pardon those who wrong him اها ولكن العفو انما يكون عند القدره على الانتقام however pardoning truly manifests it only counts when you have the ability to take revenge فانت تعفو مع قدرتك قدرتك على الانتقام you pardon while you have the ability to take revenge اولا رجاء المغ... لمغفره الله عز وجل ورحمته why would you do so because you yourself you're hoping for allah's forgiveness and his mercy فان من عفا واصلح فاجره على الله ever pardons and rectifies and verily his reward is upon Allah. Thanian, the second, لإصلاح الود بينك وبين صاحبك in order to uh, reconcile and create love between you and your companion. لأنك إذا قابلت إساءته بإساءة if you reciprocate his wrong with a wrong of your own استمرت الإساءة بينكما then harm and wrong will will continue between the two of you. وَإِذَا قَابَلْتَ إِسَأَتَهُ بِإِحْسَانِ If you reciprocate his evil with good, عَادَ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَيْكُ وَخَجِلْ He will return to you with ihsan and he will be shy. And I've tried that. And oh my Rabb, oh my Rabb, does it, does it drain me? And does it take away from, from, from I, don't know how, I don't know how much it takes. But go, go check the comments. I've I've done that and in in many cases wallah the person that was very violent disrespectful when when we re- re- replied with respect they felt bad and they they changed their tone as opposed to my annoying sarcastic replies which just add fuel to the fire it's a challenge to be able to be good all the time in this regard especially when people speak about your family i mean so the worst the worst you could ever do to a man the worst thing you could ever do to a man is to speak about his wife or his daughter or his women folk uh, online when you have no means to to uh, uh, reprimand or to teach this person a lesson in manners if you're a real man if you're a real man and you have something to say about my wife or my daughter come to my house come to my house knock on the door and then run your mouth. But the worst thing that will drive a man out of his mind is to talk bad about his family, as many people have done. And if I want to reciprocate that with something, I will make him cry. But then Islam uh, holds us back from acting uh, in a thuggish, uh, uh, foolish manner. But based on on a, a man's natural innate, you don't you don't talk about his family that's a red line we could differ all we want and you could disagree all you want and you could do whatever you want but keep a man's woman's folk out of your mouth because that is unforgivable and so what i've been doing is i just block the person because i know that if i respond i'm going to respond in a way that is not praiseworthy at all 
And believe me, I could say some nasty things in, in return. But then that wouldn't be good. Nor is it befitting. But anyways, it's a sad state, wallah. When a person feels that they're brave enough and audacious enough to speak about, you know, your, your family. Like this uh, uh, filthy uh, Daniel, when he put that post and said that we should send our wives and daughters uh, to the ruler so they can engage with the yoga uh, that was, you know, that was taking place here. You know, that's just, if I were to say the same thing about what he does with uh, his wife on YouTube and bringing her in front of all the people, wallah, I would make him cry, wallah. Because that's that's something I've always uh, thought was inappropriate. But because it's his wife, just keep your mouth shut. Don't go there, you know. I have a million other things against him that I can highlight besides this one. And I could, I could say a lot more than what I just said. I'm just, I'm just scratching the surface. But I won't. I will not stoop to these levels. I will not stoop to this level. I will not involve someone's personal life or someone's uh, uh, wife or mother or daughter or sister into, this, uh, into these conversations. Unlike them. They're at any cost. They're willing to insult you at any cost. And that was the thing that, by the way, that made Sajid completely disassociate from him. Khalas, that was, the, that was the, the thing that broke the camel's back. Because at this point, there's absolutely no respect left. There is no respect left. There's nothing left. And had we been in the streets, you'd be in the ICU where no one will see you except the ones who will bury you. But alhamdulillah, it's good that you're somewhere in Ohio or uh, Texas or uh, driving a Lexus and feeling like uh, whatever. Hey, طيب ثانيا أي قال الله تعالى ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم Allah Jalla Jalaluhu says the good deed and the evil deed are not equal repel the evil with that which is better then verily he between whom and you there was enmity will become as though he is a close friend فالعفو عند المقدرة من سمات أهل السنة والجماعة so pardoning when able is from the traits of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Lakin bishart an yakuna al-afwa islahan. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Provided on the condition that this pardoning is actually a form of rectification. Fa'an tadamman al-afwa isa. But if your pardoning is going to bring about harm, fa'annahum la yandubuna ila thalika. They no longer encourage that. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَطْ Allah made a condition. فَقَالَ فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ Whosoever uh, pardons and reconciles. أَيْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي عَفْوِهِ إِصْلَحْ Meaning whoever in his pardoning, there's a form of reconciliation and rectification. أَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ فِي عَفْوِهِ إِسَاءَ As for the one whom in pardoning him, there's a type of harm or evil. أَوْ كَانَ سَبَبًا لِإِسَاءَ Or it will become a reason for evil to occur. فَهُنَا نَقُولْ لَا تَعْفُ Here we say do not pardon. مِثْلَ أَنْ يَعْفُوا عَنْ مُجْرِمْ Such as to pardon a criminal. وَيَكُونُ عَفْوَهُ عَفْوُ هَذَا سَبَبًا لِاسْتِمْرَارِ هَذَا الْمُجْرِمْ فِي إِجْرَامِ And this pardoning of yours will become a reason that would allow this criminal to remain a criminal. To keep committing crimes. فَتَرْكُ الْعَفْوِي هُنَا أَفْضَلْ So leaving alone, avoiding, pardoning here is better. وَرُبَّمَا يَجِبُ تَرْكَ الْعَفْوِ حِنَ أَذِنَ Perhaps it could, become, it could become obligatory that you leave and abandon pardoning someone at that stage because it's going to lead to that which is worse. قَوْلُهُ أَوْ قَوْلِهِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِبِرِّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَذَلِكَ لِعِظَمِ حَقِّهِمَا uh, so they command the dutifulness and being kind to your parents. And that is because of the, the gravity of their rights. Again, another example. So you have li'idhami as opposed to li'adhm. Uh, 
Azam is bones. Azam is grandeur, greatness from Azim. Uh, so here, another example of the importance of the Al-Lugha Al-Arabiya. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لِأَحَدٍ حَقًّا يَلِيَ حَقَّهُ وَحَقَّ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ Allahu Akbar. Allah did not give anyone a right that follows his right and the right of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa except the two parents. فَقَالَ وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and join none with him in worship and do good to parents. وَحَقُّ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم في ضمن الأمر بعبادة الله The right of the Prophet وسلم is included in the command of worshiping Allah. لأنه لا تتحقق العبادة حتى يقوم بحق الرسول عليه وسلم because worship cannot be established until you fulfill the right of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم بمحبته واتباع سبيله by loving him and following his path ولهذا كان داخلا في قولي that's why it's included in the statement of Allah عز وجل وعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا and worship Allah and do not associate any in worship with him وَكَيْفَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ إِلَّا مِنْ طَرِيقِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم And how, how can Allah be worshipped except through the way of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم And it could be read both ways. You could say وَكَيْفَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ أَوْ كَيْفَ يُعْبَدُ اللَّهُ Oh, about the difference. Oh my gosh. Look at the difference, brothers and sisters. Here, this, this could either be مَبْنِي لِلْبَجْهُولِ uh, or this could either be, uh, what do they call it? Na'ib uh, fa'il. It has a name in, in English. I don't recall the name. So you could say, وَكَيْفَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ And he we're referring to Damir Mustatir, meaning that worshipper. How can he worship Allah? يَعْبُدُ is fa'il mudari'. Allah لفظ الجلالة is maf'ul bihi here. في محل maf'ul bihi. It's in, a, in a, it's the object of the sentence, so it ends with a fatha. It's mansub with a fatha. So, وَكَيْفَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ meaning the person, إِلَّا مِنْ طَرِيقِ الرَّسُولَ وَسَلَمْ except through the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Or it could mean, how can Allah be worshipped except through the way of the Prophet ﷺ? Look at the difference now. وَكَيْفَ يُعْبَدُ اللَّهُ Because it's na'ib fa'il. And it, therefore it's barfu' بِالضَّمَّ Subhanallah, see the difference? عَلَى كُلِّ حَالْ وَإِذَا uh, وَإِذَا عُبِدَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُقْتَدَ شَرِيعَةِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَقَدْ أَدَّ حَقَّهُ وَإِذَا عَبَدَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُقْتَدَ شَرِيعَةِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَدَّ حَقَّهُ And if he worships Allah in line with the legislation of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم then he has fulfilled the right of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ثُمَّ يَلِي ذَلِكَ حَقُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ Then right after that comes the right of the parents. فَالْوَالِدَيْنِ تَعِبَا عَلَى الْوَلَدِ Ah, uh Bismillah. -huh. Alhamdulillah. Falwalidani ta'iba ala al-waladi. So ta'iba here is muthanna, dual. Both parents, they struggled or they exerted themselves in regards to the child. Wala siyam al um specifically the mother specifically the mother قال الله تعالى ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها and we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and kind to his parents his mother bears him with hardship and she brings him forth with hardship وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ And we have enjoined on man to be good to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. وَالْأُمُّ تَتْعَبُ فِي الْحَمْلِ The mother, she struggles with pregnancy. وَعِنْدَ الْوَضْعِ And when she delivers. وَبَعْدَ الْوَضْعِ And after the delivery. وَتَرْحَمُ صَبِيَّهَا أَشَدَّ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ الْوَالِدِ لَهِ And she is merciful. She shows more mercy to her baby boy than his father would show to him. 
ولهذا كانت احق الناس بحس بحسن الصحبه والبر حتى من الاب ذاتس واي شي واز ذا موست ديزيرفينج ذا موست انتايتلد اوف ا كايندنس اند كومبانيون شيب اند دوتفولنس ايفن مور سو ذان ذا فادر بيكوز ذا ماذرز ستراجل وذ ذا فادر ار واي مور سوبيريور اند اف يو ار نوت ميريد then you will not understand if you are married then you're like oh yeah i know what you're talking about because as far as the father's concerned um it's you know merely being annoyed when the child cries at night and the father wants to sleep uh and the father has no problem in continuing sleeping if the child is crying of course as as long as he knows that the mother's around the mother however cannot ignore a child who's crying and just sleep She's forced by her natural disposition to get up and look after him and change him and uh, nurse him and do whatever it takes to get the job done. The man do, does none of that. The man is doing no nursing, uh, hopefully. And the man is also not really changing diapers. And if you are, then I am sorry, my brother. I'm sorry that you've had to go through this nasty uh, uh, process. Uh, but generally speaking men don't change diapers they might if uh, they might if 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 necessary but it's not there uh, it's not part of the protocol uh, at least in our cultures again these matters are, are cultural in islam accommodates uh, many cultures so there's no harm in in uh, urf as long as it doesn't conflict with the quran and the sunnah so since the quran and the sunnah did not stipulate those matters it really goes back to the person's culture In some cultures a man will never change a diaper in some cultures the man is the only one who changes a diaper and if you're in that second culture i suggest that you change cultures soon just because that's like ew al muhim qala rajul a man said ya rasul allah o oh, messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ahqq an nas bi husn sahabati hu is who of the people has the most right of my good companionship qala ummuka the prophet sallam said your mother qala thumma man qala ummuka he said then who he said once again your mother qala thumma man he asked him a, a, a second time a third time qala ummuka after three times your mother your mother your mother qala thumma qala fi ar-rabi'a and the fourth time the prophet sallam said thumma abuk then your father So the mother was given three right three times the right of the father in terms of the sons or the daughters good companionship and excellent treatment not that the father is sidelined or mistreated he is going to be treated excellent excellently but the mother will be treated more excellently than the father and that ladies and gentlemen shows you that islam in some cases has support for the female gender that is not granted to the male and we don't call this uh feminism or masculinism or any type of ism this is adil rabbani this is divine justice this is what allah azza wa jalla revealed and we listen and we comply no man on earth who's a muslim will say that's not fair how come the mother gets three times the right of the father say shh, shh be quiet Okay this is from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was revealed by Allah end of discussion similarly our sisters should behave the same way when they come across ayat and ahadith which favor men over women as soon as the sister starts running her mouth shh sister shh be quiet be quiet behave behave comply submit obey Don't be like well, how come this and how come that and why do men get more inheritance money than women and why is it the man who gets to decide what happens why is he the shot caller and the decision maker and why and why and why and why because that's what Allah Azza wa Jalla said we didn't complain when there were areas where a woman was given a privilege over a man and so you should not complain when it's the other way around why Allah Azza wa Jalla is hakim on khabir he knows exactly who should be given what based on what capabilities and potential they have if you know the creation of allah better than allah then see you on the last day buddy and it's not going to be funny it's not going to be cute it's not going to be good either well ab 
ايضا يتعب في اولاده the father also struggles with his children he also يعني goes through his own difficulty ويضجر بضجرهم and he becomes bored when they're bored ويفرح لفرحهم and he becomes happy when they're happy ويسعى بكل الأسباب التي فيها راحتهم وطمأنينتهم وحسن عيشهم and he strives in all possible ways in all possible ways he strives in that which has their uh, uh, comfort and their tranquility and a good life يضرب الفيافي والقفار and he goes around the desert and in the wild areas من أجل تحصيل العيش له لأولاده in order to earn a livelihood a living for himself and for his children True or false? True. Unless you're not a real father either. Like some of the brothers in this day and time who rely on their wives. She has a job. He's sitting at home doing nothing. Or she has a job and she earns more than he does. Or she has a job and he has a job but she pays the bills. And she looks after the kids. Then they wonder why those marriages are not successful. Because it's not meant to be this way. It's not meant to be this way. الرجال قوامون على النساء. Men are the caretakers and the ones in charge of women. بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا because of what Allah favored some of them over others and because of what they spend. So it's the man's job to to earn a living and look after his family. That means also, brother, that you have some sort of uh, budgeting mechanism that you live by. Not like most of the people I know, they, they make money, they spend money. They make money, they spend money. Everything, everything they make, they spend. Buy nicer cars and, uh, you know, nicer clothes, uh, brand clothes that are super expensive. Gucci and Versace and uh, Christian Dior and I don't know what else. You know, like a, a, a t-shirt that costs $600, $700 or pants that cost $1,000. Why? Why? I'm not telling you look, uh, uh, you know, look ghetto and nasty. But you don't have to spend so much money to look nice and decent. Wait for discounts. Wait for sales. Whatever money you have, save it. Invest. Think of businesses. Think of, think of things that when you die, your family will not have to reach out and extend their hand in, in, in poverty and begging people for, for a, a help. How often do you hear this? Subhanallah, as soon as a brother dies, the first thing that people do is start collecting money for his family. The wife and the children are in the street next month because they have absolutely nothing saved up. Their whole life, they just everything they make, they enjoy. No, that's extravagance in the first place. Second of all, come on now. So part of your manhood as a father and fatherhood is, is actually thinking long term. And the wife is the key success factor in this issue. Because if the wife is not on the same page, then goodbye. It's going to be warfare at home. And many women, may Allah guide them, don't think like that. They don't think, uh, they don't think along those lines. All she wants to do is you know, enjoy herself and spend money on nonsense and makeup and uh, things that she could do without. Not saying that you should, uh, you know, live a, a terrible life. But everything in moderation. Same thing goes for furniture. Buy decent furniture within a reasonable price so that you don't overspend. Don't overspend. I don't know how to say it. That's 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 what I got. Anyways, على كل حال, where was I? Now, فكل من الأم والأب له حق. So each of the father and the mother they have a right. مهما عملت من العمل, whatever deeds you do, لن تقضي حقهما, لن تقضي حقهما. You will never be able to fulfill their rights. ولهذا قال الله عز وجل وقل رب ارحمهما كما رب ياني صغيرة. That's why Allah says, My Lord, bestow on them, bestow on them your mercy as they did bring me up when I was small. فحقهم سابق. Your parents' rights have already exceeded you. حيث رب ياك صغيرا حين لا تملك لنفسك نفعا ولا ضرا فواجبهما البر. Because they brought you when you were small, when you did not even possess for yourself any benefit or harm. 
So the, the right that they have upon you is that you're kind to them and that you're dutiful to them. Khalas, there's no escape from that. Otherwise, say, okay, go back in time when I, till I was small and then let me, let me grow up on my own. And you can't do that either. So you're framed. It's done. والبر فرض عين بالإجماع على كل واحد ناس. بر is a, a personal obligation. It's an individual obligation upon every person according to the consensus of the scholars. ولهذا قدمه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على الجهاد في سبيل الله. That's what Prophet Sallam even gave it preference over fighting in the cause of Allah. كما في حديث ابن مسعود. As in حديث ابن مسعود قال قلت I, he said I said يا رسول الله أو مسجد الله أي العمل أحب إلى الله what deeds are most beloved to Allah? Qala as salatu ala waqtiya. The Prophet said, praying on time. Qultu thumma ay. I said, then what? Qala birru walidain. Then he said, being dutiful to the parents. Qultu thumma ay. Then I said, then what? Qala al jihadu fi sabilillah. Fighting in the cause of Allah. Struggling in the cause of Allah. Before that comes being dutiful to your parents. That's why when many people ask me, brother, I want to seek knowledge, but my parents are not letting me, blah, blah, blah. Say, akhi. If obey your parents because their right is given precedence over struggling because of Allah on the battlefield, let alone struggling in the cause of Allah by learning Islam and teaching it. Who are then your, your parents? They are your, your father and your mother. As for the grandfather and the grandmother, they also deserve some dutifulness. It's not equal to the dutifulness or the kindness required for the mother and the father. Because neither the grandfather nor the grandmother had to put forward and suffer in the same way that the mother, the, the mother, the mother and the father did in terms of fatigue and looking after and, and noticing things and you know looking after the children. So you have to be dutiful to them as under the, the umbrella of keeping the kinship ties. But they are the most rightful of your kins of, of being connected with them. As for the bir in its ultimate sense, uh, then that is for the mother and the father. However, what is the meaning of bir? Bir is بر is to deliver good to the best of your ability and to refrain from evil. Uh, oh, that's going to take a while, but it's okay. Maybe we'll extend the Q&A. طيب. ولهذا, نعم. إيصال الخير بالمال. So, for example, delivering good financially. وإيصال الخير بالخدمة. Or إيصال الخير بالخدمة. Or delivering good by servicing them. Being good and, and delivering good to them by, uh, by allowing happiness to enter upon them. D bringing happiness to them. Such as a cheerful face. And kind statements and actions. And whatever contains their comfort. That's why the, the preponderant opinion is that it is obligatory to service and look after your mom and your father and your mother. And it's a right, it's a, it's a dutiful, it's a, it's a duty upon the children. If that does not harm or create harm for the child. However, if that is harmful to that child, he does not have to look after them in the sense, except at the time of necessity. Except at the time of necessity. تمام؟ uh, yeah. So this is in terms of serving the parents. ولهذا نقول. That's why we say إن طاعتهما واجبة فيما فيه نفع لهما ولا ضرر على الولد فيه. That's why we say obeying them is obligatory in that which has benefit for them and also does not entail harm upon the child. أما ما فيه ضرر عليه. As for that which has a harm upon the child. سواء كان ضررا دينيا whether it is a religious harm كأن يأمرك بترك واجب أو فعل محرم such as your parents commanding you to abandon an obligation or to do something haram فإنه لا طاعة لهما في ذلك then there is no obedience to them in that regard أو كان ضررا بدنيا or it is a physical harm فلا يجب عليه طاعتهما he does not have to obey them أما المال as for wealth 
فيجب عليه أن يبرهما ببذله ولو كثر ها ها It is obligatory on him to be dutiful to them by spending the money even if it's abundant, even if it's a lot of money. إذا لم يكن عليه ضرر If that does not however harm him ولم تتعلق به حاجته and it's not something that he himself needs direly والأب خاصة له أن يأخذ من مال ولده ما شاء ما لم يضر and the father specifically has the right to take whatever he wants of his child's wealth as long as it doesn't inflict harm upon the child. وإذا تأملنا في أحوال الناس اليوم if we, if we observe the conditions of the people today وجدنا كثيرا منهم لا يبروا بوالدي we find many of them are not dutiful to the parents بل هو عاق rather he is undutiful تجده يحسن إلى أصحابه you see him dutiful you see him kind and excellent and, and, and good with his companions his friends ولا يمل الجلوس معهم and he's not bored of sitting with them لكن لو يجلس إلى أبيه يا أمي ساعة من النهار but when he sits with his father or mother even an hour of the day لو وجدته متململا لو وجدته متململا you see him bored dying in boredom كأنما هو على الجمر as though he is sitting on burning coal سبحان الله فهذا ليس ببار this person is not dutiful بل البار من ينشرح صدره لأمي وأبيه ويخدمه ما على أهداب عني the true dutiful one is the one whose chest is expanded he willingly serves his mom and his dad and he serves them with his eyes ويحرص غاية الحرص على رضاهما على رضاهما بكل رضاهما بكل ما يستطيع يعني he exerts himself he's very keen to the best of his ability to uh, please them in whatever way he's able to وكما قالت العامة and as the, uh, the, the, the lay people say البر أسلاف بر is like a, a debt or a loan فإن البر مع كونه يحصل به البار على ثواب عظيم في الآخرة being dutiful in spite of the doer attaining a great reward in the آخرة فإنه يجاز به في الدنيا he will also be rewarded for it in the dunya فالبر والعقوق كما يقول العوام أسلاف so being dutiful and being undutiful is like a loan uh, أقراد it's, it, uh, to stuff it is loans that will be paid back إن قدمت البر برك أولادك If you put forward dutifulness to your parents Your children inshallah will be dutiful to you وإن قدمت العقوك عقوق عقك أولادك And if you put forward undutifulness Then your child will also be undutiful to you And your turn will come وهنا حكايات كثيرة There are many stories في أن من الناس من بر والديه فبر به أولاده That a person was dutiful to his parents So his children were dutiful to him وكذلك العقوق في حكايات Similarly being undutiful There are many stories in this regard تدل على أن الإنسان على أن الإنسان عقه أولاده كما عقه أباءه It shows uh, stories of a person was treated uh, uh, unkindly and evil by his children because he was evil to his parents فأهل السنة والجماعة يأمرون ببر الوالدين أهل السنة والجماعة They command dutifulness to the parents And with this inshallah we conclude this Part of the dars, bi'idhnillah, next week we'll be discussing keeping the kinship ties. Uh, so let's see what's going on here in the Q&A. Oh, ya Allah, I cannot even move. I am so sore. In many videos, the speaker is cussing, swearing, but the swear words are beeped out or censored in the middle. For example, the person who says, with the beep being placed in the middle. Okay. Are these kind of videos permissible to watch? Yeah. If the if there's a benefit in this video, I mean, if there's a benefit in this video and the only problem is that they're beeping out the curse, it's being beeped out. So you're not hearing a, a curse word. No problemo. The massage in Istanbul have innovations and clean shave imams with trousers below ankles. Is it better to pray at home? No. Go to the masjid. Pray with them and avoid their innovation. Now, there are claims being made by a brother Muzam al Faqiri from Sudan that Sheikh Uthman al Khamis is an Ikhwani. Is it true? Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard a bunch of, of people of knowledge uh, highlight some issues with Uthman al Khamis. I, I didn't really uh, investigate the matter uh, enough for me to be able to give you an answer. Now, Can we have a collab video of you and Ustad Abdul Aziz Al-Haqqan? 
الشيخ مصعب may Allah preserve him return from Ma'ahad no Habibi Mus'ab inshallah will be in the Ma'ahad for years bi'ithnillah if Allah gives us a long life and health it's going to be a while before he comes back home if he comes back home um, I, 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 the Sheikh Abdul Aziz يعني, I'm not at his level to be even doing a collab video with him I mean if he asks me I'll be more than happy but I would feel shy to put myself forward and try to do something with him Naam. Salam alaikum Ustad wa alaikum salam oh one. What if you think what if you think you forgot to do something major in salah and therefore do sujood is sahu, but then after the salah you remember that you didn't forget anything. Repeat salah. I don't know. Uh, my question is I have a doubt that hadith isn't preserved because we are told Bukhari and Muslim are authentic, but Albani Ibn Baz and many others found weak hadith. Why didn't Allah just preserve? There's no part two. The hadith should be banned for the Christians. So with their Bible. Habibi, first of all, uh, go back to the first question, please. You have a mis uh, you have a misconception. Uh, no Muslim has ever said that Bukhari is revealed by Allah or Muslim is revealed by Allah. Even the scholars, when they say that the most reliable books of hadith are Bukhari and Muslim, in they say in spite of some uh, uh, a hadith in there that are uh, criticized and there are problematic a hadith that the scholars have differed on their authenticity and they, they have every right to do so and this is from the wisdom of Allah this is from the wisdom of Allah to keep that clear distinction between his words his revelation and the words of human beings that however does not mean that you go to the other extreme because Allah did not preserve the hadith of Prophet Sallam the same way he preserved his own words in the Quran that does not mean that you're allowed to go to the extreme now to claim that there's absolutely no preservation of hadith because everything in front of you historically and factually prove that the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is preserved. And the fact that we're actually able, the very fact that we're able to say there are a hadith within Bukhari and Muslim that are criticized or that are questionable is the very evidence of the preservation of the hadith. Otherwise, if we didn't know, then everything will be taken face value. But that's how particular and specific and genuine or authentic are the people of hadith and the scholars of hadith that they're, they don't they don't fear anyone when it comes to speaking about what could be authentic and what is not. So all you have to do is go that extra mile of, of verifying the authenticity of the narration. And that's number one, number two, number three, number four. Or let's go back to number one. Allah is not questioned about what he does. You will be questioned. You're not in a position to be asking or inquiring or uh, uh, asking Allah, why did he do this? Why didn't he do that? Why didn't Allah make the hadith equally preserved like the Quran? You're not in a position to ask that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? So there is a point where you submit to Allah. This is from Allah's ultimate wisdom. This is how the slaves are tested. This is how you differentiate the, the rightly guided from the deviants, the saved and aided sect from the deviant sects. How do they encounter? How do they react? How do they correspond? How do they comply with these narrations? How do they verify authenticity versus not? Who uses weak hadith? Who uses authentic hadith? It's all part of the dynamics uh, and the robust nature of Islam. So don't worry, my man. It's all good. Allah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Mr. Adil Najaru. Are the children responsible to pay their parents haram loan 500 plus K? Ouch! Even if they can't pay it or don't want to deal with it, let alone go into war with Allah. Um, you need a fatwa. And I cannot give you this fatwa. But I'm sure there's something on Islam QA in this regard, Ya Adil. Now. Is there a difference of opinion on it on it breaking your salah when someone walks in the area where you would make sujood and not suit out not outside that? And how can we remove pride and knowledge? Type. First of all, um, is there a difference of opinion? Uh Allahu Alam, I'm not a faqih. What I do know that a person should not walk, uh yani should not walk within the area where you make sujood. And that that takes away from the reward of the salah. I'm not familiar with that completely uh, uh, nullifying your salah. 
may, you may you might be familiar with the opinion that I'm not familiar with. It does take away from the reward of the salah. It doesn't nullify the salah altogether, unless it's a, a man and a woman uh, walks in front of him, which is a whole other discussion. That's not what you seem to be asking. How can you remove pride and knowledge? Well, by knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, al insana ma lam yalam. Allah taught man what he does not know. You're not any special. It's the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. Be appreciative and enjoy it in, in humbleness and in kindness. Now, how to respond to an intellectual person who denies Allah is above his arsh and Allah will be seen in Jannah and Allah will be seen in Jannah because they say Allah is free of space, time, direction. Well, by first by identifying this person as a Jahmi, uh, the Jahmites who, who took their religion from, from Aristotle and Plato and uh, those uh, fools and they try to understand the names and attributes of Allah in the light of uh, negating the, the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal as it is done in philosophy. Those people are Jahmites from Jahm ibn Safwan. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, you, you, you silence them with, with Dalil Qati' with the Dalil al Qati'i. Both are correct. So you just have to have knowledge of, of you know, the Quran and the Sunnah and the statements of the Salaf and you, you show it to them. And bear in mind, a lot of these people are followers of their desires. They're followers of their desires. Even though they see the truth, they will not comply because their hearts are, are ill and, and sick. May Allah guide us and guide them. Next. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How do we respond to people who say that Islam is an extremist religion because it allows the killing of apostates? By saying, really? <laughs> that makes Islam an extreme religion? Okay, then, uh, according to your standards, every country in the world is extreme. And every other every religion in the world is extreme. Really, look what the Hindus are doing. They're killing, none, killing people outside of their religion. And the Christians and the Crusaders. And uh, in, in any country, espionage, uh, is tantamount to, to capital uh, punishment and you will be killed. And, and most of the countries in the world, this is the case. And Islam is no different uh, than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who legislated those things. And if you're saying that Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, is an extremist, then you're crazy. So, so something like this will come from a disbeliever. So you use the fact that uh, first you, you convince them with Tawheed. And once they comply with Tawheed, then they have to comply with the rule that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed. Because logically, you may not be able to convince them. You might, you know, you might use, think you use a logic sailor, but this, like I told you right now, other countries, they say, yeah, well, I'm not sold. Still, why does Islam have that? At the end of the day, there's so much you can do from an intellectual point of view. So the main objective of you, your, your objective and my objective is to invite them to La ilaha illallah. Once they believe in La ilaha illallah and they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then a natural byproduct of submission is that you accept those rulings. Otherwise, you don't want to believe in Allah. It's okay. Go to hell. No problem. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is the ruling on MSA in schools like creating one? Yeah, Sheikh. Those, uh, those uh, you know, associations don't are not free from calamities. I, I would not be in favor of creating another group or another uh, uh, entity. Let someone else do the job. Now, uh, regarding at tarifi I'm against the manhaj of the Khawaris, but shouldn't we wait before issuing a verdict when it comes to specific people until great sheikhs such as Fazan speak about them? That, if that's what you want to do, that's what you do, Akhi. I'm not forcing anything upon you, Barakallah Fiqh. Do you? What is the ruling on playing football with people who do not cover their thighs? Uh huh. Um, people who do not cover their thighs. Allahu alam. As far as I know, that it's allowed because this is the, the, this is similar to saying what is the ruling on going to a mall where people are not wearing hijab, and what is the ruling of going to the supermarket where people are are are, are wearing shorts. At this point, you can't go anywhere. So you're playing sports. Don't look at their thighs. Your job is to lower your gaze. If someone is not covering their aura properly, which is which is everywhere you go, it's on an airplane, it's it's in the bus, public transportation, anywhere you go, you're gonna see people not covering themselves. Your job is to lower your gaze and keep moving, baby. Hello, Stad. Uh, which book I should purchase first? A Salafi explanation of a muatta. 
or the Sahih of Ibn Khuzayma or the Tartib Fath al Rabbani, Sharh Mustad Imam Ahmad, where they only kept the authentic narrations and narrations like the Sunan. I would say the last book, the last one, Allahu Alam. What do you think of Abu Islam Salafi's article on pork derived gelatin? Is it reliable? I don't know what he has said, but I know my Sheikh uh, Farid Abdullah was of the position that that through the process of of uh, istihlal, which is when when uh, pork goes through a, such a, a chemical process that is irreversible, then the the byproduct or the end end product does not take the same ruling as the former product. So if something is haram in its in its essence and then it goes through a chemical process and because of that, you're unable to reverse it. You cannot take it back to its original form. Then the ruling changes. It's no longer haram. Now, uh, in the car, I'm told to put on something or told to choose from the famous American du'at. Who is the least worst out of them so I can choose him? P.S. If I choose you guys, are you Ahl Hadith now? No, not Ahl Hadith. Choose. What do you mean if you choose us? Why can't you choose us? Are we some? Some are we bad? Or people can't can't bear listening to us? I don't understand. You want an easy guy that that everybody's happy listening to? Tim Humble. Tim Humble, Mashallah, Tabarakallah, Allah bless him, is the most uh, uh, well received and and soft spoken uh, du'at upon the truth that I know of. Is easy to understand, straightforward, uh, uh, mellow, composed, and agreeable. Unlike me, and many others like me. So put put on Muhammad Tim Humble. Now, Tufan Karacha, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam. Can you please touch on the video of SP Files put up Muhammad Hijab ranting on about Salafis? Zakallah khairan. Oh. So if you're referring to the uh, video that is, I'm guessing you're referring to that video, which is from the uh, podcast or whatever that was with uh, Daniel, Daniel and, and Muhammad Hijab, where he broke down the, the Salafis and Madkhalis. That was the most ridiculous breakdown I've come across. Uh, while there were some uh, uh, points uh, of truth, there was a lot of uh, misunderstandings and, and uh, a lot of, uh, categorization that was just not accurate. Uh, many people were categorized or he he would allege that Fulan will definitely consider Fulan a mubtadi' or who will do tabdi' on him, even though th those people never made tabdi' of the others. It's one thing that, for example, they don't agree with this other person. It's another thing to reach a point where they do tabdi'. So I think he was just, it was his own subjective input on it. And the entire five-hour never-ending uh, podcast was just subjective opinions of Muhammad Hijab and Daniel. With all due respect, neither of them speaks with knowledge. Even though he said good things about me and he said that, uh, you know, I'm, he likes me, khair, that's very kind. I think he's, he's getting better in terms of his behavior. But in terms of what Muhammad Hijab uh, represents in terms of Salafi Islam, he's got nothing to do with Salafiyya. Honestly, or very little to do with Salafiyya so that I don't oppress him. Very little to do with Salafiyya because Salafiyya is not what he's on about. It's not about every 15 minutes putting up another short video, sh short against Shamsi, making fun of him here, making fun of him there. It's not about these wild reactions. It's not about uh, continuing to push philosophy as a way of giving da'wah. It is not about uh, uh, claiming that Ibn Sina is someone to be looked up to or to be, uh, yani, well, it, things that just, يعني, I, wallahi, I don't know, I'm out of words So Muhammad Hijab khayran, he, There's a lot of work that needs to be done I don't know, I mean the people in the circle Obviously he's influenced by the people in the circle Whether positively or negatively But he's he, it's, he needs to have a different set of friends And unfortunately the people that could be his close friends Who wish good for him Are not within his circle They're usually on the other side of the spectrum They are the enemies that are being attacked and in the last video, he was kind to us, but and at the end of the day, he still attacks us. And I, they even made a video against me on SP files. And anytime someone now is trying to defend the Sunnah of the Prophet is now being added to the list of of uh, bootlickers.
And he's part of that campaign. He is part of that campaign. Even though, and, and the irony of all irony is that <laughs> Danielle was looking for someone to, to basically be the other hand to clap with him. But I guess Muhammad's uh, 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 state of mind was different. And you could see that Danielle was like, what the heck, man? Did I really bring this guy on? Like, how can we, how can we change the subject? Because he was hoping that he would just continue to trash Sajid and talk trash about him and put him down. And Muhammad wasn't on that note on that day. Of course, he changes all the time. He's never consistent in terms of his approach. But that day, he just was, he was feeling good. I don't know what he drank. Maybe it was good tea, good coffee, good meal, something. Something clicked so that he was mellow and, 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 and kinder. Still, falsehood from the beginning of the podcast till the end. Falsehood all across. A'udhu Billah, the amount of falsehood is, is petrifying. Like straight up ikhwani uh, manhaj being, uh, being uh, painted all over the screen. But in spite of that, that shows you how off Daniel is. That even a close com uh, companion of his still didn't agree with him. Still didn't agree with him and still uh, rubbed it in his face that Daniel's approach is completely unjustified and unwarranted. And this Daniel, one of the most stubborn people on earth, does not back down. He is the king of double down. He should be called Daniel double down Dajik Dajijatu. Dajijatu. Dajij. Dajij from noise. Dajijatu. Daniel Dajijatu. There you go. That's a new name for him. Because every time he's confronted with the truth, instead of saying, oh, thank you, he doubles down. Generally. Maybe one time I saw him tell Sajid, okay, I, I, I admit I made a mistake when I thought that it was you on the super chat. Other than that, anytime he says, he doubles down. That's why he said, that's why we continue to call them bullickers and a bullicker is not even a strong enough term. Blah, 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 blah. Be quiet, man. Be quiet with your nonsense. You always double down on falsehood. Even when you go against the compassionate imams, you had to lie in order to achieve your goal. And now when it comes to us, you continue to lie to achieve your goal. But anyways, I don't want to... There's a lot more to come in the video, so we'll wait until then, inshallah. Ahlan, ahlan. Ash'ari is rejected Allah's above. They say if you believe the earth is round, then on the other side, they're up. Is you're down, so we can point in any direction for Allah. Refutation for this. The refutation for this is an aqidah class. Yeah, Captain, go back to the playlist and go back to the uh, a lesson which we spoke about Allah's transcendence. That's the same thing we were discussing earlier. Akhi, these are people that are trying to understand Allah according to philosophical principles. They're not understanding Allah according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed with his finger to the sky. And the slave girl pointed with her finger to the sky. So, and they didn't think about we are on this part of the earth, and ah, da, 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 all this nonsense they didn't think about. Then you act accordingly. That's aqidah and that's submission to Allah. You want to insert philosophy into everything, you will end up with, with as an atheist with no God. Trust me. Now, I'm away from my parents for more than five years. I want to stay with them, but they want me to continue study abroad. What should I do? Obey them, obey them, obey them, and continue to study abroad. Can I do kara for the two rak'at sunnah of Fajr if I miss them at another time? Yes, you should do them right after Fajr. Right after Salat al-Fajr. Salam wajdi wa alaykum salam. Do you believe that Muslims in different sects are kuffar? A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Why would I think they're kuffar? When the Prophet ﷺ said, ummati ala wa firqa, My ummah, my nation, meaning all of them are believers, will divide into 73 sects. Kulluhum fil nar, all of them will be in the fire. Not because they're disbelievers, but because they were sinful and, and, and innovative. They were innovators. So they are worthy of the fire. Illa wahida, except one. قالوا, they said, who is it, O Messenger of Allah? قال, من كان على مثل ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي. Whoever is upon where I am today and my companions. So I believe there's one saved sect that will not go to the fire, go straight to Jannah, and the others will be worthy of the fire. Well, whether Allah Azza wa wants to punish them or not, that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's decision and business. But they are all part of Islam, and therefore they are all Muslims. So no, I don't believe that all the other sects are kuffar. However. There are some, for example, that never were part of Islam, like the Qadianis and the Five Percenters 
and the nation of Islam and those people that are and, and some denominations of Shia, those people don't even have the tenet, the basic tenets of faith to qualify to be Muslims. As for Sufis and uh, the, uh, the Ash'aris and this guy and that guy and all the different denominations with Islam, no, these are still Muslims. They're just misguided. I don't know where people get these ideas from, man. Why are women weak in thinking, brother Abu Musab? No, Habibi, not all women are weak in thinking. Some women are weak in thinking. Some women are strong in thinking. And some men are, are weak in thinking. And, and go look, go on the comment section, see how many men are weak in thinking. Uh, there's no such thing. I don't know of this from being a hadith. The hadith mentions uh, that women are deficient um, in, in certain areas. Uh, deficient in their intellect doesn't mean that they are weak in thinking in the ultimate sense. And Prophet Sallam explained uh, why this is the case. Yeah, their priorities are different than men. They're more emotional and we are more practical. Now, This guy is still uh, trolling us. Who is he fighting with? This guy, yeah, yeah, cuz. Stud, what is your stance on the stud Abu Taymiyyah Said? I don't know. I don't have any stance on it. Or you already asked me that question before. Yalla, we need to call it a day, guys. We're done. Can women can women seek khula if the husband takes on a second wife? If she didn't put it as a condition in the nikah contract? Yes, she can. She'll be crazy to do so. A woman can do so. It's not advised uh, if she believes that she will not be able to fulfill his rights. If she believes that because he took on a second wife, she's unable to fulfill his rights and she doesn't want to fall into uh, uh, sinfulness by not fulfilling her husband's rights, she can seek for an khula. Is that the ideal and the right thing to do? Absolutely not. A sister should be welcoming of another sister, a fellow believer, a fellow believer, a sister in iman, a sister in faith to join to be part of the family, uh, to, to accommodate another sister that is in need of a husband, in spite of the jealousy, in spite of the difficulty, in spite of the struggle, that is what is expected of a wife to do, to support her husband in this regard as well. That's part of the support that a wife offers her husband. Um, and, and otherwise, there will be a lot of broken families and a lot of deprived sisters and a lot of uh, uh, women that are unmarried. Uh, which is already the case. There's already a surplus of women versus men. So one of the solutions, divine solutions Allah gave is, is the uh, polygyny. So yeah. But if she feels that she cannot, she can. Will she regret it? I would say 99%. Yes, she will regret it. Now. Uh, would you be able to mention an example of eloquence in the grammar of Quran or its linguistic meaning? Yeah, we could do so in the, in the tafsir class, Ya Abdullah. We, we, we do uh, highlight that often in the aqeedah and the, uh, what should we call it? Uh, in the tafsir class. What comes to mind is, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ Allah لَفْضُ الْجَلَالَةِ is مَفْعُولْ بِهِ is the object of the sentence. That's why it ends with the fatha. And ulama'u is the fa'il, is the subject of the sentence. That's why it ends with the dhamma. If you were to misread it, if you didn't know grammar, and if you were to say إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ that will convert the meaning to become verily Allah fears the scholars among his creation, which is a statement of kufr. So that shows you how important grammar is in highlighting the proper intended meaning. Now, I don't feel like working because I want to learn Islam. Plus, I don't like physical jobs. If I were to work, I would work at home. My wife works. She works. She hood. At she's good at what she does. What should I do? I'm. What should I do? I'm lazy. Yeah, Allah, Allah, I don't know what to tell you, man. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy, bro. Uh, you could work from home. It's fine. You don't have to do physical jobs. But um, you, look, man, you have to think long, long term. You have to think about children. You have to think about your wife's respect for you in the long run. Usually women uh, will not respect men 
who depend on them. That's just a general rule. Women will not respect men who depend on them. That's just she will when when the opportunity uh, comes and arises, she will she will rub it in your face and criticize you. And when you try to show authority, she will say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." Now you remember authority. I'm paying for the bills. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And you you have nothing to say. You will have nothing to say. Get yourself out of trouble before you lose your manhood. Uh, your manhood all together. Come on, man. Brother, could you upload a video about how to pray with proper obligation and sunnah? This is very important for the subcontinent people like us. But there's already stuff like that online. Yeah, Tawheed, the base of Islam. Huh? Yeah, th yeah. without mentioning names. There's already stuff like that online. I don't think I need to do that. Zakallah khair. Yalla, I need to go. Akhsar dalil umdatul ahkam. Rawdan wat sharh should I do for umdatul ahkam with Riyadh al-Salihin? Three volume be too high and what about tafsir? Wallahi dayyatani ya shaykh. When is the question from the first question? Fain is the question. Where is the question? I don't see the question. I just see a bunch of books being named. Questions like this should be asked to our to Abdurrahman Hassan, not to Miskin Abu Musab. Please answer my question. I'm worried. I hope I'm still Muslim. Abu Musab is watching Superman and superhero movies with Shir Kufur. No, it's not, brother. No, it's not Kufur. Uh, not unless you really believe that those people possess those powers. And you really believe in these superpowers, in which case you, ha you have a problem. But if you're just watching it like a person would watch for entertainment, you have a problem uh, in having, you know, looking at haram and music and whatever. Yes. But does that mean it, it constitutes shirk and kufr? No, it is not. And I doubt that you believe any of that stuff. The last person who believed that Superman was real was my uncle. He put on a towel. He jumped off the balcony. And they caught him in midair, I think, before he landed and died. So obviously, Superman didn't work. Yeah, what's his name? Where is this guy? Yeah. Okay, khalas. We're not going to finish with this, you chas, you cuz. Brother, please give us a break, akhi. Allah yarda alayk. Khaf alayna shway. Yani, fi ghayrak fil hayatu fil konha. Ta'ad tisra'na wa tisalna million, million alf su'el. Ta'ad jannina. Khalas, habibi. Bikaffi, Allah yarda alayk. Yalla, we're done, sah? What? Yeah, yeah, we gotta go to this uh, message. Salam alaikum. Sorry. If Daniel apologized, could you see yourself accepting it? Of course, yeah, he, of course. Yeah, Ustad. Yeah, Ustad GZ. Yeah, GZ. What do you think this is? Do you think, what What do I look like? Do we, do we look like Shayateen? If he apologizes and he rectifies, well, he will put them on, on my head over here. I've said this a million times. We have absolutely no problem, no problem with anybody. On a personal level, if Yasir Qadi and Nu'man Khan and Mufti Mank and Daniel and Brother Haji and every person that has problems out there, if they all repented to Allah Azza wa Jal and they they called to Tawheed and the Sunnah of Prophet Sallam, Wallahi, we, we would love to host them on our channel. And when we see them, we give them a, a military salutation and put out the red carpet for them and, and, and have the loveliest time in the world. That's That's what it is. I have no problem with anyone. We have no problem with anyone. Okay, that's it. Yeah, so we have no problem with anyone, Ikhwan. Wallah. I don't have any personal issue with them. I I go guys, if you if you if you if you really want to know whether we're sincere or not. Just check history. Check who was the first for person to in, to promote Nu'man Ali Khan? Your brother Wajdi Akkari. And who was the first person to defend Daniel from the attack of Abu Tawbah and those guys? 
when they had that podcast, your brother Abu Musab Akkari. On multiple occasions, I've defended those people back when things were acceptable. Back when they had no issues. We've only had issues because of their change of ways in terms of Islam. That proves to you that there's nothing personal. It's not like before he used to let me ride his car and now Daniel took his car back and I'm like, okay, I'm going to want to get some. Or as our miskeen brother Muhammad Hijab put it, that the people are sitting there watching and observing how many followers. Oh, he's reached 160K. Khalas, now it's time to go after him. Ya yeah, Sheikh, Wallah al-Azim. Aib, ya akhi, Wallah aib. Aib. To be, to be uh, at this level, waiting for the number of followers and then this is when you strike and this one you attack. What do you take us for? What do they, what do they, how do they understand these, the, the deen? I don't understand. Those are serious matters, man. Wallahi, we don't warn against someone until, until and unless there's a serious issue. You Look how many times you ask me about people that I'm not sure. I say, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not uh, hasty. I'm not negligent. In, in uh, uh, you know, just warning against people or mentioning people. Very, I'm very particular. You understand? Only when we know there's a legitimate problem that we actually speak. Otherwise, keep our mouth shut. Now, if he apologizes and rectifies and he changes his ways, I'll be the first one to celebrate. Allah Musta'an. Abu Musab, do you forgive people in chat who troll you even if they go far? Yes, of course I forgive them, Akhi. Yeah, of course I forgive them. Why not? Forgive so Allah will forgive us. Yalla, zakum lahu khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Someone's asking about this book. What about it? Someone's asking if it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. Seller of Musk. The Seller of Musk. Really? Okay, that's it. That's Mu'ad, not Mus'ab. He's got issues. <laughs> Allah yahdik ya Mu'ad. Allah yasalhak ya Baba. Allah musta'an. Ya Allah, assalamu alaikum. I am the go right now. 